budget deficits. For more, let's get Mark Bailey from Think Security, his take on this. Mark, thank you for waiting so patiently uh, for the Treasurer to, to go through with his argument about what all this means. We know that neither he nor uh, Chris Bowen, who the other possible uh, contender for that job, want to be the one who sees the credit rating pulled from Australia's uh, grasp to see that AAA rating pull. But first of all, your take. S&P choosing to move now, to move even before we have a clear indication of who the government will be, is this just a warning shot or does it, does it kind of illustrate how keen or how, how sure they almost are that we will see a downgrade of Australia's credit rating? Yeah, I mean, that's a, that's a really good point, Carrington. Uh, I think let's, let's really understand what the negative outlook actually means. So when a rating agency puts a, a company, or in this case a sovereign, on negative uh, outlook, what that actually means is that there's a, a one in three, only a one in three chance of a, down, of a downgrade within the next two years. So it's not like it's a, a, a negative credit watch or an, on review for a downgrade where you know, there's going to be a, an actual formal review process that takes place within two or three months. So it's, it's not as severe as that. It is kind of a, a, a very mild warning shot across the bow. And as you've rightly pointed out, it's, it, you know, the, the election isn't uh, decided fully yet, but it looks like we're going to either have a hung parliament or some kind of uh, weak coalition government. But uh, S&P's uh, talking points in the in the research piece that they published with the uh, the change in the outlook is very much focused on that fiscal deficit and and controlling the budget. And what they've said previously is that uh, that was likely to come in balance by um, 2013. Uh, that was the previous government's estimate, and that balanced budget is now looking out into 2021. Uh, so kind of a further eight years out there. And, uh, and obviously they can either tackle it by tackling spending or by tackling the revenue side of things. But in either case, it looks like that whichever government um, goes forward in the next few years is probably going to have very little stomach or very little ability to try to address those uh, issues um, because it's not got a, a strong mandate from the, uh, from the electorate. So that's going to be the problem going forward. In terms of the market's reaction, it hasn't been that great as you've, mm. as you've seen in terms of the currency. You know, currency is down probably about 30 ticks. But the, uh, you know, in terms of the two years and the 10 year Aussie uh, government bonds, you know, they've probably moved you know, one or two basis points. So you know, I think it was you know, potentially priced in, in the market. There'll be huge um, you know, headlines tomorrow in all the newspapers. But is it, is it a big factor for the financial markets? Not really. Is it a, a bit of a dint in the pride? Possibly, but uh, you know, I guess uh, kind of facetiously, you know, you've just lost three 0 in the in the rugby to the English, so you know the pride's already been hit. Uh, in, in, you know, but you know, in all seriousness, you know, it's not the end of the world. It would be double A plus uh, in in that regard um, for um, the foreseeable future, and that's a very very strong rating relatively. And in terms of the yields and this, what the attractiveness of Australia, it, it, it's not really going to dampen that from an, a foreign investor's point of view. Oh, well, we are looking at the Australian dollar chart there. We did see an immediate sell-off in the, the aftermath, about a half of a cent, but it does look like it's now coming back. Uh, it does look like they're heeding your words, as it were, Mark, suggesting that maybe it isn't as big a deal, as you say. This isn't a clear indication necessarily uh, that we will see uh, a downgrade, an actual downgrade of Australia's AAA. But seeing as you brought up the rugby, Australia still has a AAA credit rating, unlike the UK, who saw it drop from uh, AAA down to AA in one foul swoop. Take, take us through how quickly things can deteriorate here, but also the fact that Australia still has that credit rating, is it actually making a big difference to things like the pricing of our bonds? Is it making a big difference to the rates that people are paying on their home loans, or is it all a little bit overblown? Look, I, I don't think, you know, a triple A rating is, is probably not what it was 10, 15, 20 years ago. Uh, I think it's, it, it's, it's changed significantly because the, you know, the rest of the world has changed and there's been fewer and fewer members of that AAA club. I think there's only about 10 or 11 left. And obviously if Australia falls by the wayside, there'll be uh, even one, one fewer. Um, and in that regard, you know, you've seen the US lose its AAA rating back in August 2011. Uh, and it, what happened there was actually, you know, bond yields fell, exactly the same situation uh, in the UK. And that's kind of a, a fairly mild and uh, kind of uh, not particularly interested reaction from the, uh, the government bond market in Australia on this news. I mean, it's not, it isn't a downgrade. 
Uh, but you know, again, it's a step in that direction. But I think it was kind of widely expected that you would see some kind of reaction from the rating agencies, you know, either in terms of an outlook change or maybe even uh, a step further being put on review for uh, negative uh, on negative credit watch or review for downgrade. And that hasn't happened. So you know, the, you've had Moody's and, and Fitch come out at the moment and reaffirm Australia AAA with a stable outlook. Uh, you know, maybe they change that once uh, the new government does um, come into uh, power and they get a better sense in terms of those fiscal targets uh, which S&P has highlighted and the rest of the market knows needs to be addressed if it is, if it is to uh, maintain its AAA rating. Another, another factor that um, S&P raises in its report as well is the significant amount of external uh, funding which needs uh, Australia requires given its um, kind of small uh, demographic um, you know, it's, it's very reliant on offshore um, investors to fund uh, that current account deficit and, and fund um, the, the, uh, the government debt and also the state get debt as well. And it does mention the, the state's um, balance sheets as well and said, look, you know, over the next two years there's, there's likely to be continued deterioration uh, on at the state level as well. So that again indicates that you're going to see some kind of fiscal pressure on the states if they want to maintain their current ratings uh, respective of where they are at the moment. Um, but so it's, it's the same everywhere, you know, governments are under fiscal pressure uh, to try to drive growth, but they've got their own constraints in terms of what they can do in terms of balance sheets and also from the rating agency's uh, point of view. And that's putting pressure more and more on the monetary authorities of each, each country or each region in the case of the uh, ECB and to try to stimulate that growth. And it's, it's a difficult situation. But I think you know, in terms of bond yield, in terms of market reaction, in terms of what people are going to pay for mortgages, I don't think this is going to be a material impact uh, in, in that overall cost. And I think it's going to be more uh, important in terms of what potentially happens you know, in, in the UK property space and their impact on UK banks and also what happens in the Italian banking sector in terms of the bailouts there. And that in terms of a global relative value and the impact on the Australian banks uh, cost of funding when they fund in that global market will have a much bigger impact than Australia being cut by one notch to um, either AA1 or uh, S&P's case uh, AA+. Uh, you know, I think that's going to have a much bigger impact on the, on the bank's cost of funding which will be fed through in terms of their, the rates that they charge on their mortgages and on the deposit accounts as well. Yeah. Okay, Mark Bailey, thank you so much for your insight. We'll talk to you soon. Thanks, Carrington.